We're going to look at Genesis chapter 6, and then we're going to look at John chapter 10. The Bible says, in the last days there will be doctrines of devils, 1 Timothy chapter 4. The Bible also says in 2 Corinthians chapter 2, that we are not to be ignorant of Satan's devices. So it's important to know that in the last days we are to be aware of what Satan's doing in our world so that we don't fall prey and, and blind and deceived into his system. So one thing that I would like to talk about is what Satan has used, which is very interesting to me, is that mankind, it is very obvious in man's nature. This is obvious. This is obvious in man's nature. It is obvious in man's nature to believe that there is a God. That is always involved in man's nature. It's to believe that the God exists. Now, Satan realized this. So Satan, because he realizes that God exists, he has to come back against it. So, he doesn't want mankind to worship God. So, he's going to have to somehow attack this, how God would exist and that mankind would seek after God. So, what he first started to do is we're going to look at Genesis chapter 6. And it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth and daughters were born unto them that the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair and they took them wives of all which they chose so notice that these gods came down from heaven and intermingled with the human women and the Lord said my spirit shall not always strive in man for that he also is flesh yet his day shall be in hundred and twenty years notice that this grieved the Lord all right so if uh, we can always keep an eye out on the frame as well as the sound, that it's all good, that there's no echo. And then, so we'll see right here that Satan, he always attacked God. He always attacked, tries to attack God being worshipped by mankind. So what did he do? What he did was that he sent his little minions down there by sending these little gods down there. Now look at John 10, John chapter 10. And then notice what Jesus quoted right here. He's quoting from the book of Psalms, something about these gods. John chapter 10, verse 34. Jesus answered them, Is it not written in your law? I said, Ye are gods. This quote is in Psalms 82. So jump to Psalms chapter 82. Psalms 82. Now, you know what a lot of, Pastors say, well, this is referring to the judges of the earth. Mm -mm, wrong. That's not what it is. All right? Bible-believing church, if you're attending a Bible-believing church, then you know what that is. Those little gods, they're not referring to the judges of the earth. What they're referring to is that they're referring to the sons of God, the fallen angels, those little gods. All right, if you don't believe me, Jesus said, is it not written, right? So he's quoting from Psalms. Let the word of God reveal it to you. Psalms chapter 82, let the word of God reveal it to you. Verse 1, God standeth in the congregation of the mighty. He judgeth among the gods. How long will he judge unjustly and accept the persons of the wicked Selah? Defend the poor and fatherless. Do justice to the afflicted and needy. Deliver the poor and needy and rid them out of the hand of the wicked. They know not, neither will they understand. They walk on in darkness. All the foundations of the earth are out of course. Well, see, Pastor, it's referring to the judges of the earth right here. Okay, I can understand that from verse 1 and through verse 4. Okay, we could probably take it that way. But, keep reading. Verse 5, it says, all the foundations of the earth are what? Out of course. Wait a minute. There was a time that the earth shook up so much that the foundations were out of course? Didn't Genesis chapter uh, 7 or chapter 8, it talked about the foundations of the earth were broken up at Noah's flood? Uh, but anyway, let's just keep reading. Verse 6, I have said ye are gods, and all of you are what? Children of the Most High. Uh, Genesis 6, sons of God, right? Came in unto the daughters of men. Uh, but keep reading. But ye shall die like what? 
men and fall like what? One of the princes. Well, that's definite proof. These are not referring to human judges or human princes. Because God pointed out that at verse 7, they will become, they are going to die like mortal men, like mortal princes. How can he talk to the prince and say, you're going to die like a prince? You're not. <laughs> Hold on right here. Verse 7, they, it's referring to a fallen state then. See? So this is referring to those sons of God, those fallen angels, who die like a mortal human, mortal prince. So we see right here, this makes so much sense when we look at Scripture with Scripture. In verses 1, all the way through verse 7, we see right here, these are referring to these little gods sent from the God of what? This world. And in whom the God of this world. That's why he's able to send these other little gods downstairs, because he's a God of this world. So he, thus he sent the little gods down to this world. Now, this is interesting. Jump to Genesis 5 and Romans 2. Genesis 5 and Romans 2. You got to understand this. It is in man's nature to worship God. They know there is a God. God exists. So that's a no-brainer. It is in man's nature to believe in God. Why? Because look at all cultures and nations around the world before some, some idiots came out with their higher education through evolution and stuff like that. A lot, everybody from different nations across the world believed in some sort of God. But look at, Genesis, uh, look at Romans 2. We're going to look at verse 14. For when the Gentiles, which have not the law, do by nature the things contained in the law, these having not the law, are a law unto themselves, which show the work of the law written in their hearts, their conscience also bearing witness, and their thoughts the meanwhile accusing or else excusing one another. Now jump to Romans 1. Romans 1. Why is it in their conscience there without excuse? They have something in them. Because Romans 1.19, because that which, uh, that which may be known of God is manifest in where? In them. For God hath showed it unto them. See, something in them, their conscience say no, because he showed it to, in verse 20, from his creation. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are what? Without excuse. That matches with Romans 2, that they are without excuse. See, there's something inside man's nature that knows that God exists based on Romans chapter 2 and Romans chapter 1. But look at Genesis 5. This is very interesting. Before the sons of God came down, look what the people did at, Ro at Genesis chapter 5. You're going to notice what the Word of God says right here, what men began to do. What men began to do at Ro uh, Genesis chapter 5 and then verse... Okay. I don't know why I'm having a hard time finding it. Uh, hold on right here. Oh, not good, not good, not good. It should be here. Genesis 5. Uh, Genesis 4, probably. Yes, Genesis 4, 26. <laughs> I apologize. Okay, Genesis chapter 4, verse 26. Look at this. Notice, ever since the beginning of mankind's nature, they knew something, that there was a God. And to Seth, to him also there was born a son, and he called his name Enos. Then began what? Men to call upon the name of the Lord. See, it is in man's nature that they know. It's, in fact, wasn't there one who tried to call upon the name of the Lord at Genesis 4? Cain. He tried to, he even knew that. He even knew the true God, the right God. He wasn't worshiping false gods. He even knew the right God. He just had the wrong kind of religion. That's his problem, the wrong kind of worship. So what does Satan do? He can't just keep doing it through like, Cain, like he did with Cain to mess up God's worship. He sent these guys. And when these guys came down upon the earth, you got to realize this. In Genesis 4, people realized it was one God, one creator. Think about it. Why did people come up with multiple gods? Where did that come from? Unless 
The first time it's mentioned, these guys came down. When these guys came down, mankind later on realized that. And then that's why you have so many different myths and stories from Grecians, Egyptians, and other people, and Romans who claim that this God came down upon the planet and we have multiple gods that we worship. Where did they get that idea from? You can't just pull that out of thin air. Where did you get that from? They got it from something. Even in mythology class that I took in higher education, they say a myth cannot start unless it starts with some kind of source. There was some kind of source, and then you give it a generation, then it turns into a myth. Let's look at Acts. Let's look at Acts. Looky, looky. We're going to look at Acts. Chapter 14. Chapter 14. Notice what the Word of God reads right here. We're going to look at the book of Acts. Chapter 14, verse, uh, verse 11. And when the people saw what Paul had done, they lifted up their voices, saying the speech of Lyconia, the gods are come down to us in the likeness of men. Where do they get that from? Where do they get that from? Genesis 6. God's coming down upon the earth. They just can't get that out of thin air. Where did they get that from? Thus Satan ruined the worship of God by sending down multiple gods. That's why what you got to understand that in order for Satan to corrupt God's true worship and to bring up a new world order system, he has to ruin the right worship of God. And how does he ruin the white, right worship of God? He pulls down multiple gods. Hinduism, right? We have many different gods to worship. You got, the, you got witchcraft. You got through the occult. Many different gods to worship. So Satan, what he does is that through that, that originated from his evil system. But here's another thing right here, is that what Satan, what he likes to do now to keep ruining this, is that there are people, go to Genesis 3. Genesis 3. It did not start Genesis 6. You thought it started with Genesis 6. This is the multiple God worship where Hinduism comes from and other religions to come from. But I'll tell you the majority of this world or a large portion of this world, who their God is. You know what their God is? Look at Genesis 3. This is their God. They get it from their daddy the devil long, long time ago. This is the religion of mankind today. Genesis 3, and notice what he says right here at verse 4. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. Look at verse 6. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took up the fruit thereof. Why did she eat? Because of verse 5. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as what? Gods, knowing good and evil. You know what the first system is of setting up as gods? Is mankind himself. Do you know what day and age we live in? Humanism. That's the day and age we live in. Now jump to Romans 1 again. Romans chapter 1. Humanism. That's why this New Age stuff is garbage as well. Yeah. You know, finding an inner God in you. That's why you got to realize that this humanism of this world is wrong. There is no God. God does not exist. It's only us. We're the ones who make the difference in the world. They worship themselves. They're their own God. They're the ones that make all the difference in the world, they think. Look at Romans chapter 1. We read verse 20, right? They are without excuse. God... God's existence is within their very nature. But now look at verse 22. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. Like evolution, right? Uh, like today's higher humanist intellectuals, right? Why? Because from God's existence, they switched it to this in verse 23. And changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man and to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lusts of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves, who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and served the what? 
creature more than the creator. Creation is what created us. The universe is what created us. It's not God. That's what evolution teaches you. Uh, that's what Buddhism teaches you. Hinduism teaches you. We all came from the universe. It created itself from these spiritual, uh, these spiritual entities within. Uh, that's what, uh, this is this new age stuff as well. So you gotta, this is uh, mother nature. See that? This is all tying to new world order stuff, see? So notice the, the God is you. God is you, mankind. They worship the creation more than the creator. God created the universe. No, the universe created itself. God created you. No, no, no. We were created through the process of evolution, which came from the universe, which came from creation itself, see? Scientifically, it created itself, see? Science is the studying the physical workings of everything in this universe. Everything limited to this creation space, to this universe space, is what created us. That's what they believe. They worship this more than the creator. Mankind is its own god. Multiple gods, right? Hinduism. Doesn't Mormonism teach this too? There are multiple gods out there. Jesus and Satan used to be brothers. That's what Mormonism teaches. So we shall be as gods. Mormonism teaches that there are multiple gods in throughout multiple different planets around the world, uh, throughout the universe. So you see that? This is something that Satan just messed up. This is something obvious, folks. Can I repeat that? This is obvious in man's nature. Cain even knew that. And then Satan had to attack it. And how he attacked it was the beginning of Genesis, mankind being its own God. Satan, he attacked the conscience of Romans 1 through 2 through the creation being the God. He sent down these multiple gods so that they can worship. Ah, but then the Muslims, they might cry out, oh, we don't believe in this stuff. There's one God. We believe in one God, Allah. Uh, look at Daniel. Now look at Daniel, chapter 11. Daniel, chapter 11. This is all tied in. It doesn't matter what religion you are unless you're a Bible-believing Christian. Unless you're a Bible-believing Christian, you're safe. But all religions around the world, they are following a false god. You must understand. There is no God but Allah. We believe in one God, Allah. And he's a capital G. Capital G, Allah. Capital G, the God, the God. Well, let me give you this capital G right here. We're going to look at Daniel chapter 11 and verse 36. And the king shall do according to his will, and he shall exalt himself and magnify himself above what? Every God, and shall speak marvelous things against the God of gods. Look at this, this antichrist in the future tribulation, what he's going to do, he's going to set himself above all other gods because he's going to be the one true God. And he's a capital G at verse 38. But in his estate shall he honor the God. Do you know what Allah means? Allah means the God. Didn't you know that? We worship the God, the God. No, give me his name. God always gave me his name throughout the Bible, folks. He always gave us his name. He didn't say, I'm the God. No, he gave us his name. That's his title. You know what his name is? I am that I am. You know what his name is? Jesus Christ. You know what his name is? Alpha and Omega. You know what his name is? Jehovah. Amen. Neither shall, uh, so verse 38, but in his estate shall he honor the God, Allah, see that? Of uh, forces. Kind of like the Muslim terrorists today, right? Those forces. We're going to kill you and stuff like that. So, I mean, that's what their language is. Allah means the God. Of course, it appropriately fits them. How about that? So you see right here, it doesn't matter what religion you are. Satan, he's going to cover all bases, and he's going to use this to conglomerate into his new world order system. That's what he's going to do. So that's where you get this idea of how Satan sullied the worship of God. But there's one more final thing what Satan did to sully the worship of God. And we're going to look at 2 Corinthians. So we're going to close it here. 2 Corinthians. This is one last thing that he did to sully the worship of God. Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 4. Back to who? Back to who, folks? Cain. Back to Cain. 
All right, he was worshiping the one true God, the right God, right? But you have to do it in the wrong way, the wrong way. And as a matter of fact, you can get the right God with the right name, but the Bible says it's going to be another one. Look at this. 2 Corinthians 11, 4. For if he that cometh preacheth a what? Another Jesus whom we have not preached. Or if he receive another spirit which ye have not received. Or another gospel which ye have not accepted. Ye might well bear with him. So you'll notice right here what Paul says right here in 2 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 4. It doesn't matter that uh, you say, oh, I'm worshiping Jesus Christ and I also believe in the gospel. No, what we preach, Paul says, in the word of God. If the God is not the God of the Bible, his name could be Jesus, I don't care. But you got to realize this, just because his name is Jesus, if it doesn't follow what was preached in the word of God, you're worshiping a wrong person. You're worshiping the wrong God in the wrong way. That's what Cain did. He was trying to worship that right kind of name of God, but he did it in the wrong way. It was not according to what God preached and wanted in his rule, in his yeah. word. Yeah, amen. What's the proof, Pastor? Because God simply told Cain, if you did well, would not your sacrifice be accepted? Amen. See, Cain, he rebelled. He did it his own way. 